So what's what's the story with the end of capitalism? We're gonna replace it with? Well, it'll still be capitalism. It's just uh, we want to reel in the big banks. But you say end capitalism? How how it's gonna? You know you know what they're carrying. The side that they're carrying, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna replace it with end of capitalism, meaning replacing it with something else, or just ending capitalism and that's it. Uh, end of story. Democratic socialism. What is democratic socialism? I was trying. I was trying to understand. Talking to other people, what exactly is democratic socialism in your mind? Well, the, well, the socialism um, is for we the people. Uh huh. And the demo democratic part is uh, with the with our elections every four years, we can uh -huh. we can reel in. Uh, it won't be like. Uh, how the USSR was with uh, no elections, that kind of stuff. We're still going to have our elections every four years. But then why do you use the word socialism? That's what boggles me. I mean, why, why do you use at least truncated to social, which yeah. is much more palatable, which kind of makes sense. But socialism with an ism, I don't get it. Yeah, I wish they would have picked a different word, too. So you agree with me, like socialism, it's a very, very loaded word. No? Yeah. Any else? It is, but the thing is, people get communism and socialism confused. And communism is uh, the way it's, it's delivered to the people. It's uh, but Gorbachev and all them, they didn't have votes and all that. Uh -huh. But uh, with the Democratic part, it's uh, that we, we'll be able to vote them out if they, you know, if you think they become the tyrants or something like that. But when you say, and capitalism, then... I mean, and capitalism, that, again, it's very strong. The word and means full, complete, stop, no traces of capitalism. Is, is that what you're talking about? No, not all of it. It's but the uh, and means, yeah, okay. So you didn't say reform, you didn't say curtail. You use the word and capitalism. So you say and capitalism, but you don't really mean and capitalism. Is, am I getting you correctly? Yeah. Oh, okay. So and capitalism doesn't mean... And capitalism, well, social, well, we, <laughs> socialist. Doesn't want, really mean socialist. We want to end the laissez-faire uh, capitalism, which is uh, uh -huh. like pretty much hands off. But we we want hands on, so that if we can stop like the greed and how, corruption. But how how are we gonna stop the greed? I mean, we're all greedy. I mean, we're human beings. We want to have more. I want I want to have more. You know. Think of, think of girls, for instance, and I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> forget about money, <laughs> right? So, yeah, how, what you're saying. so, so how, how can I say, you know, and greed, do you realistically expect that people will stop being greedy one fine day because you, for whatever reason, want it? For others to do, by the way, probably not so much for yourself. So, so I mean, I just think, you know, and greed, really. Um. I'm not really sure how we can do it yet, but uh, so first you want to end capitalism, not really ending it. On the other hand, not really ending. But on the other hand, you don't know what to replace it with because you really haven't thought it through. Well, we thought we thought it through. It's just and it says party for socialism. Actually, socialism right there. I just noticed it. Yeah. We so, want, uh huh. We don't want the, the corporations to be running the country. But what's a corporation? I mean, I'm a small business. But legally, I'm a corporation. Even when I was just one man operation way back, I was still a corporation, one man, but a corporation. So where, where do you draw the line? 10 people is a corporation, 100 people is a corporation, a good corporation, a bad corporation? I mean, uh, how, how do you? Corporations are still good. It's just the way that they, uh, the way that they buy the elections, buy, we don't want them to buy a, buy our leaders, basically. So you're not against corporations then, you're against what you think is buying the elections. The greed. Well, but we just discovered that you can't eliminate the greed. I mean, well, I mean we're riding in circles now. I, I, left, I had a good paying job and I left it so uh, I could go, uh, I work with uh, foster kids now. Uh-huh. And I took probably, well, over 50% over pay, pay, not increase, but decrease. Uh -huh. So I could help uh, help the foster, foster kids in my in my county. Uh huh. And I, I mean, it's a no, mean, noble people, thing to do. People can do it. It's just the willingness to do it. Yeah, but uh, I was just uh, you know talking to another gentleman who was also you know wearing hammer and sickle. Uh, this is the way I look at things. I mean, 
just common sense. Forget about theology, forget about uh, the scientific communism, because uh, by the way, I'm from the USSR. That's uh, they were spoon feeding us, you know, scientific communism with Karl, Karl Marx, idiocy. Uh, but if, do you, are you married? Do you have a family? Do you have kids? Yeah. You do have kids. So don't you think that when it comes to greed, when it comes to taking care of things that before you can help others, if you have a choice, you would first, you know, kind of take care of your own, right. your own kin, your own mother, father, your own kids, and only when you're sure that they're all okay, then probably if you're a good person and you have room in your heart to help others, then you'll start helping others. But first and foremost, I mean, isn't it common sense that you are going to help your own next of kin? Right or wrong? That's right, yeah. So, but then what you're proposing, what you're saying is that we're supposed to be good no matter what. So no matter pay cut or no salary or live in misery. I mean, who wants to live in misery? Do you want to live in misery? No, nobody. No, nobody. <laughs> well, how are you explaining Venezuela, by the way? Let me... But we wanted to... Uh... Well, let me face this way so that, you know, I can see what's going on over there. So, but uh, how, by the way, how do you, how can you explain Venezuela for me? I was, I was talking to so many people asking, you know, some say they didn't read enough about Venezuela. Some can't explain Venezuela to, to me. Can you explain maybe Venezuela to me? What is happening, what is happening over there? I haven't really paid attention to Venezuela too much, really. <laughs> but if, let's say, we use common sense, if you don't mind talking to me. No, I don't mind. Okay. So if, let's say we use common sense, and very common knowledge, and the very common knowledge is that uh, there was a government before Hugo Chavez. I'm sure you know Hugo Chavez, right? Yeah. Okay. So before Hugo Chavez came to power with, the, with, with his Bolivarian revolution, he could get toilet paper in the stores, right? Well, I assume so, yeah. You, you can get food in the stores, right? Wrong. Then 10 years into his Bolivarian revolution, people, have no food. I mean, literally have no food. They literally don't have this proverbial toilet paper. They literally have to run to a capitalist Colombia just to get milk for for the mothers who have you know little kids because there's no milk either in Venezuela. All the all the while sitting on the largest reserves of oil. So one thing changed: capitalism before Hugo Chavez and sort of implementation of socialism, Bolivarian revolution, within the past 10 years. And this is the end result. I mean, if I came from Mars and, you know, I knew nothing about the life of the humans, just all I had the common sense, I would think, wait a minute, we had toilet paper before, there is no toilet paper now. What changed? Well, the, How can I explain it? It's the way that they uh, implemented the changes. I don't know why he didn't, you know, spread the wealth. That's the problem, is they're not spreading the wealth. But isn't it the funniest thing, what you're saying now, and what I mean by that is wealth, to spread the wealth, you have to have, you have, to have wealth. Otherwise, there's nothing to spread around, right? Well, well they'd have wealth with, the, with their oil reserves and all that. It's, it's but they still have it. Yeah, but they still have for all the reserves. I mean, they're still there. Oil is still there. The same amount that they are probably drilling more oil, or getting more oil, more now than in the past. But if, let's say, you know, it's about the same, I mean, it doesn't change the equation anyway. Life has changed dramatically, not a little bit, like, you know, the price of oil fluctuates, I understand, you know, life can be a little better, a little worse. But to get to the point where you cannot buy toilet paper or yeah. milk, I mean, are you serious? With all this oil in a small country like Venezuela, no bread and milk, bread and proverbial again, bread and butter. Yeah. You can't get that. So, I mean, you're talking about the wealth, but wealth ha has to be created first, right? I mean, if you have oil under your feet, doesn't mean that you have it, you possess it, you have to extract it, you have to process, you have to sell it. I mean, there's a lot involved to, to get to that wealth, right? Mm -hmm. So, what tells me, and again, if I came from Mars and using common logic is that you have to have capitalism first to create wealth. Then does it mean that it's capitalism that does create wealth? It's, it's kind of like a blending of it with the democracy part. And that's, uh, that's where if we thought that they weren't spreading the wealth, that we could vote them out. 
and implementing other other ways to get the wealth to the to the poor. But where did you get the wealth? Somebody, in the first place. Somebody over there sitting on all that money that they sold for the oil on. Okay, let's say somebody's sitting on this money. Let's use your your let's say your way of thinking. So somebody's like you say sitting on this oil. That, uh, that money's sitting somewhere. Okay, so you take this money and then uh, uh, you spread it around and then what? Why Venezuela has no bread and butter? Why? Uh, I'd have to study it more than to really know, but I'm thinking that they're just not, they just greed overtook and you just sit, somebody's sitting on Bolivarian revolution? I mean, they are spreading wealth around. Really? They are, yeah. And that's why maybe they have nothing to eat now. Maybe they ran out of other people's money. You know who said it? Margaret Thatcher. She said, she said that the socialism is a great idea until you run out of other people's money. People's money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so is that what you want? Because I see socialism over there.